been asked to show you how to connect the UI 24R to a DAW and how to set it up. Okay, I'm going to be using um, Reaper, so that's uh, one that you can try out. It's a free download. Obviously, you can use Pro Tools, which is fantastic, Logic, um, Cubase, any of the different programs that are, that are available, any of them that have Azure driver support, WDM, or for Mac, uh, it's Core Audio. You don't even need a driver. In any case, you can download Reaper from the Reaper website if you don't have a door and you just want to test it out. And a lot of other programs also have test uh, test versions that you can download. The next thing to do would be to uh, obviously install the program and then you download the USB driver. And that's under the download section and it's called the multi-channel USB audio driver. Now, for some reason today, when I clicked on it, the setup came up as this. Now, don't discourage yourself from it. You can go back, go to products, mixing console, go to say, because all, all the cards are the same, so the SI Impact for now, and go down to downloads, and you can download the same driver in this location, and that's perfectly okay. The drivers are the same for the USB. So after you install the driver, don't connect the USB from the UI 24 hours yet. Just install the driver first on a PC. Again, on a Mac you go with OS X, you do not need to do it. It's core audio compatible. It'll detect it automatically. And that'll give you a 32 by 32 USB audio interface. So install the software and the driver first, then it'll the uh, driver will let you, tell you to plug in your um, the UI 24 hour and plug it in and it'll detect it and that's that. You would then go into Reaper as such. So let me go back here. I'll tab across to Reaper and, or any software that you're running under the options section where you set up your preferences for your audio device. You, you would click on preferences and then you would select the audio system. So we would be using ASIO in this situation. So ASIO driver and that comes up with a Soundcraft USB audio driver and you can select how many channels you want to do. Say if you want to do all 32 or just 16, any amount you want to do in the buffer size and the sample rate. Uh, and basically you can click on the Azure configuration and that opens up the Soundcraft control panel on a PC. On a Mac it's a little bit different but uh, Core Audio is actually a bit simpler to use from that point of view. It'll automatically set it up to 48K because that's the format that we're running at. Um, and 32 bits, 30, uh, 24 bits, 32 channel, and the buffer size. I'm selecting safe, but obviously you can select low latency, minimum latency, depending on what your system can handle. And you can trial that out. It's really dependent on the system, what it can handle. So one, once we've done that, oh, I didn't, don't think I've hit apply. And that's always a problem, see? It changed back, so remember to apply. Okay, I'll say okay, good. Now, once we've done that, I'm going to add a track. So insert new track here. And I'm going to route which channel it's coming from. If I route it on channel 1 and 2, and you can see that in the manual, channel 1 and 2 are your left and right outputs. Then you've got OGS 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then your audio channel starts. So Right now, if I would select channel one input and I'd click on your input monitor, that's my left and right outputs. And if I wanted to record the microphone on its own, I would choose channel, because I'm coming in on channel 20, so that means this would be channel 30. And as you can see, I've got level in 30 as well. Now, where does it record this level from exactly? I will show you that by making that a bit smaller so we can see both together on the screen. Mm, that's going to be fun. I'll have to do some manipulation here in a second for you. Okay, I'll go into my mix here. I can make it smaller, but let's let's leave it as such. The recording section comes immediately after the gain. So you've got your phase reverse, your um, delay, and your um, 48 phantom power volt, uh, 48 volts phantom power that applied to the microphone. To I can using a condenser mic here, and the actual recording comes straight after the gain, so before any processors. That's for the channel recording. Obviously, the master recording is different, and that comes 
after the master processing and a channel processing. If you wanted, for example, to record a master output that's unprocessed and uh, doesn't depend on the level that you have here, okay, then you could set it up as in the previous video, a matrix output and assign that to, uh, to, the, um, to the recording bus. So then that way you, uh, it won't record um, the processing of the master output and a lot of people do that so anyway let's get let's go through this so first of all I'm recording channel 30 I can hit record here and record a little bit of audio for a few seconds so you can see that everything is coming in and coming in nicely now if I hit stop now obviously that'll stop okay I'll save all beautiful all right now to play this back obviously you need to route it somewhere um, so the first thing I'm going to do is stop the recording here and I'm going to go in my routing here depending on your software that's going to change obviously and I'm going to add a new hardware output so in this particular uh, so in Reaper I can select any output that I want to go but I want to bring it back onto channel 19 mono so I'm going to go down I'm going to go output 19 now the outputs are not the same as the inputs outputs relate to channel outputs so out one is channel one on the mixer and you can select any of the 22 mixer channels from these outputs, including 32. You can select 32, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. So I'm going to select output uh, 920, say. So same output as my input, but uh, I don't want to hear it on channel 20. I want to hear it on channel 19. So let's go back here and select channel 19, go into my edit, into patching, select USB door and I'm going to select input 20. So channel 19 is getting input 20 from the DAW now. If I have a look at the gain of channel of channel 19 now, can you see the gain is gone from this section here because the input is coming from door 20 and it'll tell you that. It'll tell you that right here. It'll also tell you that on the channel itself. So it's very easy to see where the input is coming from. So this is it's coming from DAW channel 20. Now the input from channel 20 is still going to the door and you say well, what happened to the gain in channel 19? There's another set of hardware gains here. So if you see these, you see channel 19 is still here. I can still control the gain of channel 19 if I wanted to and that's input gain. So if I had a microphone plugged into channel 19 I could still run it directly to here and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. In any case so if, we, we, if we're going to play back the audio here and I hit play on here, so that'll start playing. And as you can see, that's Seconds. coming up. So you can see that everything is coming in and coming in nicely, beautifully and, I... and clean. The recording is actually really, really pristine clean. Uh, that's one way. Obviously, you do it across lots of tracks and that's quite straightforward to do. Now, there's other things you could do in this situation. I could set up an insert, for example. If I set up an insert, that means my input from channel 20 is going to go to the DAW, then come back to it, and it'll have a little bit of latency on it, obviously, but that, that's okay in this situation. We, we can handle that. So if I hit recording on channel 20 again, and I've set up, if you can see here, output 19, I want to monitor it directly. So there's a, there'll be a section in your um, in your software where you can monitor the inputs and I'll do another video about that but this is basically how you record playback select channels the easiest way if you've recorded lots of channels and you want to play them all back at the same time is to go into your patching section okay and basically select all the um, channels to come in from DAW and that part is done under settings patching you can select DAW, patch one to one, and that will patch all your inputs to one to one. The other way to do it is to set up a sound check. And you could do that as well. So a sound check would be a separate set of patching that I could set up to one to one from DAW. So as soon as I hit activate sound check, I'm gonna lose my voice, obviously, because channel 20 is patched in into the DAW. I could remove that manually if I wanted to. And then you can go between your door and your main mixer.